Greetings to all and welcome to our show. It's called Eureka, How a Woman Can Thrive at Any Age. I'm your host, Glenda Shankal, and for decades I've successfully coached thousands of women on discovering a straightforward and easy path to their very own best lives. And I can help you find your best life too. In this show, we cover the most important things in a woman's life, happy relationships and connectivity, career and money choices for your financial freedom, and also beauty and health. Guests on this show are experts in all these areas, and we'll also be talking about how to transform tragedy or heartache into a personal triumph. On Eureka, we'll be covering the things that matter most. You know, as different as we women are, because of where we were born, how we grew up, or were educated, maybe in a university or maybe in a village, it turns out that really we're more alike than different. So no matter where in the world you live, no matter what your lifestyle, you share with other women a longing for love and genuine connection, a need for abundance, money, and personal freedom, and a hope for relationships that work smoothly and bring you joy. And sometimes we struggle with challenges and burdens, which can be hard to bear. I am here to help you with each one of these dreams, needs, and hopes. You are not alone with your deeper questions. And on my website, you'll find tools, tips, and smart action steps to help you live your best life. These are the very same tools I've been offering to my clients for decades. The website's called lovecomeseasily.com. The idea is that love should be easy to find and nourish, and it can and should successfully last a lifetime. So thank you for joining me. And now, let's get started. I warmly welcome you to Eureka, How a Woman Can Thrive at Any Age. So welcome to the Eureka Show. Debbie, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you. I'm calling in from Los Angeles, California, so life is good and sunny here. Oh, that's so good. Today, we'll be talking about all kinds of cool things related to overcoming life's challenges and turning hardship into personal triumph. We'll discuss the problem of how to turn feeling bad into feeling good about yourself from several different angles during the conversation. So here's some information about Debbie herself. Debbie Dashinger is in the spotlight as a syndicated, award-winning talk radio and podcast host. She's the author of three best-selling books. Debbie has been interviewed on more than 800 radio and television shows. She's won various awards, such as the Broadcasting Lifetime Achievement Award, and was inducted into the Who's Who Hall of Fame for Entertainment. Debbie, I'm so happy to have you on the show today. Thanks for being here. (laughs) Thank you for inviting me. This is very intriguing. And I think this is a powerful conversation that you offer. Oh, thank you. I'm excited about talking with you because I know you a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, I find Debbie pretty awe-inspiring guests. Uh, Can we talk first about the problem of facing hardship, heartache, and struggle? Do you think personally, from your perspective, that it's universal that people experience hardship true heartache and struggle. What would you say about that? A hundred percent. Yes. And Mm -hmm. it may not be exactly that. Mm -hmm. There may be some people who have way more heartache than other kinds of problems in their lives. But one thing we can be sure of, right? The joke is always, you can always be sure the guarantee in life is about, uh, the guarantee in life is about Sorry, the angels are calling me right now. They'll, they'll be <laughs> off on their way. The guarantee is about change. And so huh. with change also comes that people are going to go through heartbreak. Heartbreak means a relationship is going to end. Heartbreak means a job is going to come to an end. Heartbreak means you're going to lose money. You're going to have to do something completely different that you never anticipated. It is a guarantee. And how we react to those things is sort of everything, right? You either get stuck in it and that situation, and there's a lot of resistance uh-huh. to the feelings and the experience, or you go through it. It's a, it's a surrender of sorts. And of course, for all of us, I think we all come out the other side when we choose to heal through something softer, more wise, better to offer to others. So it is a guarantee. Hmm. 
Um, you've interviewed a lot of people over the years. What have you learned about overcoming some of life's most challenging defeats from the people that you've interviewed? Yeah, cool question, because it is from interviewing people that the light started to go on for me because I was talking to really big transformational names, Glenda. Mm -hmm. And what I started to hear from them one after another, and I wasn't searching for it when they were telling me their story, they had a wound Mm -hmm. usually that they grew up with or a traumatic event that happened and they interpreted it a particular way that created a deficit for them. And somehow they were given the opportunity to work through it. And they made that choice to do the hard work. And when they came out the other side, they found that their wound was their gift. Huh. Yeah, that's crazy. So that's something that you noticed. It just kind of occurred to you eventually that that was a trigger point for everybody that you were speaking with that had risen out of these kinds of things? Yeah. The greatest pain comes the greatest gift. And that we are each of us an unlikely hero or shiro. Mm. And it's really up to us uh, because the bigger our message and our reason to be here, the bigger our blocks. And when we get through those blocks, the more we must share our wisdom to lead others out of their darkness, right? And in order to help others out of darkness, we need to be visible. We need to be willing to step up into the light and let others know we exist and we have a message and a business usually. Uh You and I both attended a business event in April this year. And I don't know if you noticed this there as I did, but I noticed that when everyone was introducing himself or herself to the group, Each person talked about overcoming challenge or loss in a really big way, right? And several of the people in the room admitted to, at some point, having lost most everything, like huge amounts of money, a relationship, or a person. So do you think there's that connection between real and deep loss and the ability to rise when things get tough? Do you think that that's one creates the other or they follow each other? What would you say? Uh, I would say that. What's wonderful about hearing almost 200 people get up at the event that we were at, Glenda, and one after another, open up and be transparent and say, I know you're looking at who I am Uh and we're all in an event, but guess what? Let's pull back the curtain and let me tell you a little story about what I've been through and how I came out the other side. I love that because, first of all, it teaches us you can't judge anybody. You don't really know somebody's story until you know somebody's story. And the other thing I love about it is how incredibly resilient the human spirit is. People who have, like, gone into crazy debt or you heard stories about people who died and had near-death experiences and people who lost everything. People who came from Vietnam on a boat. It's like, oh, my God, you know. Yeah. It is so compelling and it makes your heart sing, I think, to hear people like this. And then ultimately it allows us to know we're not alone. Yeah. We really are all very more common to each other than separate. Yeah, that's exactly the sensation I had was, wow, I've been through so much and I'm not alone. Look at all these wonderful people who have been through so much. Um, what do you think about this idea that our success wouldn't mean much to us? If it came too easily, what would you say about that? You think mix that, it's- that mix that? I don't even <laughs> like it. Okay, I don't like do anything say? that feels small or limited. Uh-huh. And um, no, and you know, it's not everyone's journey that something has to be that difficult. I have tons of friends who are crazy, mad, successful, and that's, that's just in their somehow their soul's DNA. They were definitely meant to be that, do that. But I also really want to be clear, just because they had easy success does not mean that other things were not difficult. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a something, something to work through. And if it's not money and career and ease and success, it could be in the relationship area or it could be uh, uh, in a social environment that it's really awkward and difficult to allow people to be intimate. Or maybe you feel completely separate from a spirituality of your understanding understanding. Something in there is off because all of us have something to work on, but I definitely don't believe it has to be difficult. Mm, I like that too. 
So do you think it's true that facing trouble or at least challenge is one of the key ways to accomplish the most meaningful things in life? Or it's an impetus to creating meaningful things? What do you think about that? Yeah, maybe? No? Maybe. I think it can, meaning can come from many things. And so here, here's this. Uh, there's an invisible force for all of us of an internal drive, and we can activate it. And when we blend our drive with emotion, that's the force of life. So the question I pose to people is, what will you focus on? Wow. You have to decide what you're going to focus on because consciously or unconsciously, the minute you decide to focus and you give that focus a meaning, then that meaning produces emotion. And that, my dear, is fire to create. And what people do contrary to that is they use stories as excuses for not taking action, right? You listen to people, they'll mm -hmm. tell you stories about why this didn't happen, why that didn't happen, why they can't start something. But we all need to change our story to take action. I'll tell you something as an example. I have some amazing clients out there and just so people know, I do visibility work. You heard uh, Glenda talk about the media stuff I do when I am in media in front of the camera and the mic. What I also do is I work with clients on visibility. I help people write their book as a coach. I have a company that takes books to bestseller and I help people get booked on radio and podcast interviews. Debbie, so, we, got, we got to take our break. Hold the thought. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Stay tuned to Eureka, how a woman can thrive at any age, which can also be heard on XCBN.net and Exxon Broadcast Network. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell? The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simo TV. Simo TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at SimulTV.com. Do it today. We live in rapidly shifting times of extreme volatility and uncertainty. Such profound change brings a unique opportunity for the evolution of consciousness. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, host of Mission Evolution Radio Show, a program that explores the latest scientific developments and deepening spiritual truths supporting human evolution. Join me on xzbn.net, where I interview leading experts in science, physics, medicine, spirituality, and more. By applying divergent viewpoints to leading-edge topics, we uncover expansive and evolutionary truth to assist you on your path to enlightenment. More information and past episodes are available at missionevolution.org.
Welcome back. I'm Glenda Shankal, and you're listening to Eureka, which is being heard on XZBN.net, the X Zone Radio Network, and also can be found on LoveComesEasily.com. Our guest on this show is Debbie Dashinger. You can check out her Dare to Dream podcast at this website address. It's TuneIn.com forward slash podcasts forward slash motivational forward slash Dare to Dream radio. Okay, so let's get back to what we were talking about. Jump right back in. Pick up where you left off. Tell us what you do to help people through these kinds of things, excuses and stories. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So what I do is visibility. That's my jam out in the world. And it's about helping people get through to own their own visibility. What is their message? How are they going to disseminate that out to the masses? Because it's there. Many people don't realize that using visibility books, interviews, and so forth, that's amazing PR. So people start to even know you exist and it creates a much easier business. It's a must have for all of us because it's the world we live in, visible world. Mm -hmm. So I was saying the question is, what are you going to focus on and decide you're going to focus? And then that when that doesn't happen, people use stories as excuses for not taking action. So the interesting client story I want to share is about somebody, I'm just going to call him Jay. And Jay is incredibly successful. One of my clients, everything he touches is gold. This is like, he runs companies, he's articulate, he's amazing in social situations. He know he's very world traveled and intelligent in that way and you could probably put him in any setting and people he's going to be very charming he's also by the way cutthroat in his business it's he he can x somebody and be detached from it like no you're not right for the job sorry bye-bye here severance pay but here's the deal about (laughs) the idea of using excuses he had some trauma when he was growing up And when he was very, very young, there were a lot of deaths, one of them being his father, who died very abruptly from a heart attack, and then a grandparent and a cousin. And and so at a really young age, he didn't have the insides to deal with what was going on. So it got so bad for him and his behavior and acting out. His mom, who was now a single mom because dad had passed, had to send him away to military school. So, of course, that gave him a lot of the fodder for who he's become now. But here's the story. Jay has trouble finding love. And Jay's story is, I just want you to know, and he tells me this when we work together, I just want you to know, I have trouble getting close to people because I find when I get close, I push them away. And as I kept asking him questions, he said, you know, even at my age, and he just turned 60, even at my age, I'm still looking for my daddy. Wow. So his story is so cemented to him that he keeps perpetrating on himself what he lost, which was an intimate, deep, loving, connected relationship. In a way, it's punishing to him to still not have it by his behavior of pushing others away and choosing not to be intimate, in, out, in, out. And so we're working to change that story because the story can be everything he went through in the beginning, Mm -hmm. but let's write a different ending. Let's Mm -hmm. change it because that was a short chapter in a much greater story. And the great story can be, yes, I lived through that. And now I opt to heal the part of me that is so afraid of being touched because you will probably leave and possibly die. My greatest fear, and we all have to face our greatest fear to heal. Yes, yes. So let's talk about discouragement and how to overcome it, some tools that can work. Because we all go through phases that are dark or fearful or doubtful or self-critical where it's really rough to rise and shine and feel confident and able, right? Mm -hmm. So what would you say, some people find this easier than others to just sort of shake off the inner darkness or discouragement. What do you, how do you help people with that? Well, first of all, I'm a big 
big proponent of feel your feelings, you know, mm-hmm. instead of locking them away. So the first thing I say is if you're feeling discouraged, just acknowledge it, you know, mm-hmm. say this is real. Like I'm really sitting in this and it's important to do that because if you don't, I think uh, anger starts to come about because mm-hmm. then you, you say, I'm not just discouraged, but I'm stuck and this is not going to change. Mm-hmm. So just allow yourself like in this moment, I'm really discouraged Some of the things I recommend, Glenda, are to encourage someone else. Mm -hmm. When you step outside and say, wow, you know, Glenda, I see you're doing amazing things in the world. I've noticed this podcast you're doing and that it's really helping other people. And I just want to say thanks for doing something really good out in the world. If you do three of those a day, it'll Mm -hmm. start to change your energy. Mm -hmm. And I would say that ambiguity is discouraging, right? Because you're just sort of sitting in uh, this, maybe that, this, maybe that, but not moving forward. Mm -hmm. Movement is important. So establish a milestone so that you start taking action. Mm. And I would say the upside of discouragement is that it can motivate us to evaluate ourselves and reevaluate what we're doing and making a new choice. So it creates something differently. Hmm. I also think we should uh, feel confident about failing, failing with grace and just try something. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time. So what if it turns out some way you didn't plan or it goes south or whatever, right? Right. hundred percent. Yeah. Who says you can't fail? Failing is good. I mean, it makes you confident that, she whiz, I can survive stuff, right? <laughs> sure, uh, absolutely. I have so many times, you know, especially when you're in business for yourself and you have these great ideas and it feels good inside and you're inspired to do something and somehow it's not landing out there how you imagined it would. And I think it's very important to just keep following inspiration because they will take off And like you said, failure, it's a great educator, right? And sometimes it informs you things you need to know for the next piece you're going to go after. Mm -hmm. What would you say about the facing risk uh, versus facing the safe life that feels stagnant and comfortable? Since we're sort of in that conversation, what do you think about that? You know, some people just stick with um, safe and comfortable and stagnant and make stories up about why their life's not better than it is, right? Mm. Here's what I think about risk. Uh, Tony Robbins, this is a quote from Tony Robbins, said, there's always room in your life for thinking bigger, pushing limits, and imagining the impossible. Mm -hmm. What I do with my clients, the Mm -hmm. first question I ask after I can see where they're operating with visibility, Mm -hmm. I ask them, what's your dream? And I want to know what's not there now that you dream to be there. And that's where we start. And then it's about reverse engineering so we can create their dream. Mm -hmm. I have a client. um, His name is Joe fixed martial arts guy, very big in what he does. And he has a dream to create a domestic violence center, like Mm -hmm. a huge domestic violence center. So the first thing I knew when, he contacted me because he wanted to work together is I knew he had a story and it didn't necessarily have to be his story, but I knew something had touched him so deeply that he knew this was his mission. And that's a huge dream, right? It seems crazy and impossible. How, where are you going to get the funds? How are you going to let people know you're doing this? Where's the building going to be? How is it going to become worldwide? It's a big dream, but it's a beautiful dream. So he's taking a huge risk on an inspiration Mm -hmm. and I believe in him so much and anyone I know who stepped in that direction just wholeheartedly said hell yes I'm Mm -hmm. doing this this is what it looks like things magically it seems start Mm -hmm. to unfold you know great accidents start to happen things come your way that you didn't anticipate people start to know who you are and what's going on and offer you things or connections so I believe big time in taking positive risk. Yeah, because serendipity can't take place if we're stuck in the old patterns, right? There's no space for serendipity or positive accidents, right? 
Exactly. I mean, we all need to ask ourselves, like, how do you inspire people? And how do you inspire people to think big? And how do you inspire people to change their lives and take a risk to be that? If that's in your wheelhouse and why you're here, go for it. Mm -hmm. So in your experience, which thought processes support peace of mind, joy and well-being, would you say, aside from what we've talked about? You know, I'm going to say something maybe interesting Good. And unexpected, but, you know, I think boundaries bring a lot of peace huh. for every no that's self-protective or self-caring. There's going to be a yes. I was just, I had dinner with a client last night and she, uh, she works in building things, right? Real estate and stuff. And she was very frustrated with her partner who turned down a job. But the partner had great reason to turn down the job because the partner said, oh, my gosh, they want all these nitpicky things around money and around this and around that. And I, I know this kind of client. This kind of client doesn't work out well in the end. She was very frustrated with her partner for making that choice. And I said, why would you be frustrated? I think that's genius. If you know in your business the kind of client someone's going to be. And, of course, this is not a one, one and done client. If you're going to build something for somebody, we're talking about a year or so that yeah. you have to work with somebody. I said, that's genius because he made the choice to say no. And when, anytime you say yes, there is that space, nature abhors space, mm -hmm. right? It's going to fill it and it's going to fill it with the yes. So to have boundaries, I feel they're like beautiful castle walls. I think they can help us prevent discouragement. Time, and they can time help for a break. Hold the thought, hold the thought. broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. You have heard of the Exxon? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x -Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x -Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God, it was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, 
After the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Welcome back. I'm Glenda Shankal, and you're listening to Eureka, How a Woman Can Thrive at Any Age. This show is heard on the X-Zone Radio Network and can be found at lovecomeseasily.com. Our guest on this show today is Debbie Dashinger, who hosts a wonderful podcast called Dare to Dream, which you can find at tunein.com forward slash podcasts forward slash motivational forward slash dare to dream radio. All right, Debbie, please continue talking about boundaries. I think this is an exciting concept. How does that protect our dream and help us to expand past our limitations and weaknesses? So here's the deal with boundaries. This is not everybody, but the problem is that most people are scared to set them because most people are afraid if I set a boundary here I'm going to offend somebody or they're going to leave or they're not going to like me or you have they have something that you need and you're not going to get so we end up tolerating negative people and activities and those influence our thinking and behavior in an intolerable way and when we do that we don't honor what a true boundary is for us then we start prioritizing meaningless opinions and situations and people over our own goals and dreams this Who we so spend perfect. time with, right? This is yeah. su- such actually a big conversation in all our private lives, personal lives, and professional lives. It's about who we spend time with, what we spend time doing, what we allow in our minds to either help us overcome discouragement or fall to its forces. So boundaries are actually, this is all they are. They're a gatekeeper. And they're a mechanism for keeping the bad stuff out and the good stuff in. So to overcome discouragement, boundaries are vital. And I will tell you for sure, creating a dream, because it's a journey, it's a must. It's a must so you can stay on your own path. Right, because other people will drag you out of, they'll say things like, oh, da-da-da-da-da, excuse why you can't succeed, or nobody will ever buy that, or no one would ever believe in that. And then you go into self, sorry, go into self-doubt over it as, Right? That's kind of what you're aiming at here. You That's lose part your way. of it. Mm-hmm. What else? That's part of it. Absolutely. Naysayers. Yeah. Like, you're going to do what? When? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of things people can say, and it, it can either stimulate you to prove them wrong, or you can get held down in it. But also, boundaries could be about people coming and asking for things. Can you this? Can you that? And you end up saying yes, and then you're not doing what you're here to do and what is your mission to create, and that's another boundary. Or it can be that people are coming into your space personally or professionally, and they do not have the energy that you are comfortable being surrounded with. Mm -hmm. Listen, whether that's a love relationship, a friendship, a family member, a colleague, a client, you know, how much cojones, when you're an entrepreneur... And a client comes forward and the, the you get a vibe like, this is not good. I'm mm-hmm. really needing to vet this person. Mm-hmm. Or I've, I've worked with people like this before and it never ends up good. But you need money. Mm-hmm. You need uh-huh. money, right, in your business. Uh-huh. Yeah. What you going to do? And that to me is a huge time to set a boundary in self-care. Wow. And I think the message is to the universe and ourselves, like, that's a no because I'm waiting for the right yes to come. Oh, I love it. I love it. This is such a great thought. I wouldn't have connected these. I've made the same choice in my own business life. There's a huge chasm between people who believe they can do things and people who are stuck in a story, right? Mm -hmm. Just a huge chasm psychologically, emotionally, everything. And so saying no to people and letting them solve their own problems, right? (laughs) 
Indeed, 100 <laughs> percent. Yeah. Uh, and to trust your voice, you know, that you're going to be OK. And then in actuality, it's an illusion. All the things we think we need and why we can't exactly what you just said, Glenda. It's just another story and you can rewrite it. Huh, I love it. I love it. So what are some other tools that you use for dealing with it, with disappointment and painful challenges? You set your boundaries, you decide who you're going to work with, you trust your own instincts. What else? I think, uh, I think it's important to drain the drama. And when we respond objectively, it's a whole game changer. So in other words, if a friend came to you and said, gosh, Deb, I need to talk to you about something. I wouldn't enter it personally. I wouldn't enter it and get completely caught up in what's going on with the person because I'm not helping them and I'm certainly not helping me. I don't need energetically to take that on. But if I stay objective, I can listen to them and either just say, do you want me to listen or would you like feedback or what are you looking for here and give them what they want and need. And no matter what, I'm going to be objective because it's not my situation. I haven't created it. I'm not in it. Mm -hmm. And we could do the same thing for ourselves when there's doubt and discouragement. Get out of the drama and just look objectively, holistically at the entire situation so you can respond differently. Like really understand you have choice here. Yeah, I sometimes think that gets lost in the shuffle when there's ex exciting, painful things happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exciting, <laughs> painful things. I like that. <laughs> well, we we think that there's meaning in that, and I think it's just a story. And we can't. It's sometimes difficult to distinguish the difference, right? <laughs> right. But you know, one of the good things we can know to, in order to know a difference is, and and there's stories about everything, right? Right. If you have a pattern that's going on that feels solid because, darn it, I can never find a really good love relationship. Darn it. I can't seem to get my business where I really want it to be. Or I, I have all these dreams, but I don't have the means to, to do the dreams. Or everywhere I live, you know, something comes up with the house. Or every time I get something, it seems to be taken away from me. Whatever right. your quote unquote story is, mm -hmm. if you will dismantle that story, you'll see you're running something in a pattern against yourself and yeah. the only one really getting hurt perpetually is yourself so you do also have the power to rewrite the story and live it out from a new perspective I love that too um what would you say based on what we've discussed so far how can listeners transform their own difficulties and dis disappointments in life into personal triumphs they can celebrate can you speak to that hmm uh, I think it's really important when people are stuck or overwhelmed that they implement and they uh, stop blocking. Sometimes we can do that on our own and make our way to a particular success. Often I think we need to open ourselves to somebody who's going to be a bit of a guide on the path because they can show us pieces of ourselves and pieces of how to do things that we would never have known before. As an illustration, I do something called a visibility strategy session. So people contact me and they want to work and sometimes not everybody's ready to leap, you know, to go into the, the big program. So this is an offering I have that's very inexpensive, but I give for 45 minutes of my time and I do research on the person before and then I tell them visibly what I'm seeing going on in the world and how they completely can turn that around. I spoke with a woman yesterday. Interestingly enough, she does ancestral lineage healing out in the world. Whoa. So I thought that's a really cool thing to be doing and gosh, the world needs it more than ever. And for 45 minutes, I just bullet point, bullet point, uh, you know, her web presence, her social media, her books, her, her interviews, how she shows up even in photos and, you know, everything that has to do with visibility. It was deep and content filled. And when we were done, she was thanking me and we were hanging up, but I heard this quake in her voice and I just stopped and I said, how are you feeling? 
And she burst into tears and said, thank wow. you so much, because for the first time I feel seen and for the first time, wow. I feel like I have direction. Wow. I have been trying to do this on my own for so long and I could only get this much success. And I felt like there was a jar I was in and I couldn't get out. Thank you. Now I know what action to take and I get it. And I just, honestly, Glenda, I put my hands on my heart as she was speaking and crying and I just breathed and I thought, man, I need to receive this. Like I just need to receive right now. And on her behalf, I want to say I was so happy for her that she opened herself also to receive and say, maybe someone knows better and can help me. And I was receiving because I thought I work very hard for people. Like I really care about my clients Mm -hmm. and to get this level of thank you is really meaningful and encouraging for me to keep going forward. Wow. So you're sort of saying if you feel stuck and discouraged and you need to work toward triumph, find someone who can inspire you, mentor you, show you the next step, receive you, hear you, and help you figure out which direction to move next. So, And even wait for guidance, right? Wait for guidance to show up. Um, we're coming toward our last break, and I I love this conversation. I I thrive on inspiration myself, and I always look to wise uh, thought leaders to show me the way, which is why I've invited Debbie to be on today's show. Uh, stay tuned to Eureka on xcbn.net and lovecomeseasily.com, which can also be heard on the Exome Broadcast Network. After the break, we'll find out more about transforming your challenges into triumphs you can celebrate. We'll be right back. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. The new nonfiction book, Razor of Madness, is similar to cult movies like Clockwork Orange, Dragon's Tattoo, or The Other Side of Hell. Wayne Morin Jr. and Thomas Lee Howe will expose widespread and systematic deficiencies in this thought-provoking tell-all novel. Mind control rages among scholars in law schools. Human rights are ignored while thought reform and mental manipulation are accepted practices used as behavior modification. Dr. Louis Jolion West comes to mind. Media and public scrutiny shows that United States mental hospitals are in fact destructive murder industries. Razor of Madness Exposé Novel details this epidemic through an in-depth professional and personal investigation. For decades there has been a revolving door policy that still releases killers and pedophiles back into society. The maestro of mind control continues to haunt America to this very day. Razor of Madness is available in paperback or as a downloadable ebook at Amazon.com. The concept of a new age has been around since the late 19th century, yet much of its original meaning has been lost. What exactly is the new age? Is it a religion? A collection of obscure esoteric practices? A series of doomsday predictions? Or an astrological event? The New Age Chronicles is a unique, complementary publication bringing reason and grounded information to separate fact from fiction. 
chock full of valuable information to support you as we make the monumental shift into the new era. You won't want to miss a single innovative issue. The New Age Chronicles newspaper is coming soon to www.newagechronicles.com. Welcome back. I'm Glenda Shankal, and you're listening to Eureka. Before we get back uh, to our cool guest, who's Debbie Dashinger, I want to remind listeners they can find Eureka at the Exxon Radio Network and lovecomeseasily.com. And if you've loved this conversation with Debbie, you can tune in to her wonderful podcast, Dare to Dream. You can locate her podcast by going to tunein.com forward slash podcasts, forward slash motivational, forward slash dare to dream radio. Uh, Let's talk about for a minute the old fashioned idea of using humility to cope with difficulty. This is a word that's kind of gone out of favor in the modern age, I think. Uh, We're told to charge ahead, be assertive, make our way boldly through life, acting with confidence, etc. But there's lots of situations where that approach of boldness or assertiveness doesn't work at all. Right, Debbie? Uh, I love humility. I actually Mm -hmm. love it. I find it incredibly attractive when it's coupled with other qualities. Right. (laughs) We talked about the importance of being coachable. And of course, Glenda, you and I know that even the biggest people that we look up to, they have coaches too. There's none of us doing this alone because none of us know all the pieces that we need to know. I myself am in a one-year program right now. And how I got to my coach is because I did a weekend workshop with many other people there. And the thing I kept noticing about him was he had this incredible Buddha-like wisdom that he kept disseminating throughout the entire weekend. I noticed he would say quotes all the time and give credit to the people who actually said them. And that he walked with this, he was so humble, but he was also so awesome. And there was something for me that just felt so attracted to that, that there wasn't an ego. He didn't need to tell me how great he was or all his accomplishments. It was clear how great he was, right? Uh So he could be humble, have humility, but still his inner light was shining. And it is, to me, such a beautiful marriage of qualities. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. So let's talk about using this as a tool for easing out of difficult situations. Because I've noticed sometimes the best action step is silence and waiting and patience and acceptance. Uh, While we wait for a change to arise or a transformation to happen or the shift that we're looking for, whatever the story is. And we can take action and charge ahead and then we we hit a blank space, right? Where we can't take action for some reason, things are shifting around us, whatever. Talk to me about that experience. I think that's an important part of the process of achieving masterful dreams. It so is. I love this question so much. So (laughs) I want to start with, so you can tell I like quotes, right? There's a quote from Steve Jobs, who I just, he was such a genius, you know. And he said, start small, think big. Don't worry about too many things at once. Take a handful of simple things to begin with and then progress to more complex ones. Think about not just tomorrow, but the future. Put a ding in the universe. This dude dreamt big, right? Clearly changed the world we live in. So let me tell you a story of how I deal with this myself. Perfect. Because it's very interesting, and I don't know how common it is, but I'm willing to share. Because of how I grew up, there wasn't a lot of stability for me growing up. There was not a father in the household. My dad was a Holocaust survivor and wow. chose to not be present uh, in our lives. And then there was my mom, and she had so many needs herself. So I felt really, really, really alone. Wow. And I made choices about 
why. And of course, I was blaming myself. Somehow I was not enough. I was not this. I was not that. So that created a lot of self-consciousness. And from all of that, I, I think it created someone who wanted to really play small, which is hilarious when you consider that I'm clear I was put here to be very visible and to dream out loud, to live out loud. So there's the duality that I had to go through and the healing that I had to do to get to where I am today. I really had to heal all those inner demons. And one of the ways I found that I can move forward and not stop myself because you know, I, I fear is what comes up for me. And if anybody knows about human design or anything like that, it's in my human design. So trust me, I'm on the right path, even with my fear, but fear shuts out the light that we have. And I knew this, so I know all this, but just knowing it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. So what I've learned to do is how I speak to myself when there's an opportunity and my default in that particular situation is to shut down and back away out of fear or story that it's not going to happen and I can't possibly and it's way too big. I stop and I breathe when I recognize what's happening and where it's headed. Uh And I talk to myself as though I would a little child. True, Uh True story. And I say to myself, if you will try this just once, it's all I'm asking you, swear. Just do it once. And if you love it, then we can choose to do it again and again. And if you really hate it, I promise you we don't ever have to do it again. And then my inner child who doesn't feel safe almost always says, okay. And then we go and do it. And you already know the ending of this story. 100% of the time. I go do something and I'm like, oh my God, this was awesome. Like, this was so great. I'm so glad I showed up. This is totally where I need to be and what I need to be doing and what I'm willing to do. And so it opens the path for me to keep saying yes. You think that we have to explode the container we're living in to move to a better space in our souls? You think so? Always. Love the way you said that. That is the illusion I give to clients that I work with is that the jar they're in, that they've created a jar Uh and that jar, like they've gotten too big for the jar. So what you going to do? You got to break the ceiling, break the jar, bust out. You Uh know, life becomes stagnant if we're not always growing and changing. It is the one guarantee. We're going right back to where we started. The one guarantee you have is that. So Uh to grow, to allow yourself to get bigger than when you, where you currently is, uh-huh. is really incumbent upon all of us. That's one of the reasons I love business meetings, because I'm surrounded by people who are not afraid to go to the next level of their fear, doubt, confusion, and just wade through a, a big challenge. They don't know what the end result's going to be. It's very inspiring to me. I love it. Don't you? Yeah. I do. I find that um, inspiring also how people put their their particular puzzle out into the world, you know, their piece of what their contribution and their genius, what they're here to do. And sometimes it's really, really unique. And you don't know how it's going to fit in to the cog of the world and, and who's going to resonate. And some of the people who are real innovators, who are incredibly unique and willing to go out on a limb, because uh-huh. that's where the fruit is, right? right? They go out on a limb and they are willing to offer something to people. And it's amazing when it gets grabbed up and there's a hell yes. I would love for you to share with us. You've got about another minute and a half to two minutes. Something else precious you can share with listeners. I loved your story about the inner child. Something else precious you can share about this journey of changing difficulty to success. Go ahead. Well, I'm a big dreamer in reverse engineering. So Mm -hmm. when I started out in my career as an entrepreneur, I was all about creating dreams. I spoke about it. I've written three books about it. Obviously, my radio show, I've been on air for over 11 years, Dare to Dream. And then when the visibility thing started to come up, what I realized was that was still a very prevalent question because I wanted to know with each client, what is the dream that you have that's not there? Talk to me about that. And once they gave me their dream, I knew it was about reverse engineering, 
from the dream, me going out with them to the dream as though it's been created and coming back and recognizing the action steps that need to occur for them to get there. And it's how I learned myself to create really big dreams in my life and what I wanted to offer to them in which ever path they were following because everybody's been incredibly different. Mm -hmm. So I believe strongly in that, that there is, um, there's just a sort of, I want to say is a, a, a brilliance about doing that. What I really mean is there is a great ease. There's mm -hmm. less to have to figure out and more just to have to follow when we know all we need to do is reverse engineer to get ourselves where we want and need to go. Wow. I love the idea of reverse engineering the dream. I think there's no harm in a massive dream because uh, you will have fun along the way, even if you don't know what will happen, right? <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, you know, we talked about growth. And if you want growth, trust me, <laughs> that's one way to grow because mm -hmm. things have to change inside of ourselves and part of that is the jar breaking in order to bring in more and greater. So yeah. a real flexibility and fluidity in there can be a great asset. Oh, this has been a blessed conversation. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you, my dear Debbie, for being on the show today. My um, I, yeah. Um, I'm going to invite guests once again to uh, check out her Dare to Dream podcast radio. And I'm going to invite them to guess my friends, listeners, want to know how to live your best possible life. Tune in often and find out how would you like to strengthen your relationships, expand abundance and money, improve your health, or even become more beautiful than you used to be. I'm Glenda Shankal, your host for Eureka, How a Woman Can Thrive at Any Age, which can be heard every weekday at various hours right here on XZBN.net radio, an X-Zone radio station, and found on lovecomeseasily.com. For all days and times of Eureka, go to www.xzbn.net and check out our broadcast schedule. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Are you or is someone you know struggling with addictions, depression, anxiety, relationships, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, grief, success, and prosperity? Do you know that your subconscious belief plays a big role in the outcome of your hard work? We can help you permanently change the beliefs that may be the reason for your struggles and failures. We care about getting you the return on your investment and the results you are looking for. We can help you be free of the limitations of your past and in realizing your highest potential. We work with people by phone and Skype. For more information, visit us at www.ritasoman.com. That's www.ritasoman.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. 
Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464.